In this video, we'll cover a Scribble.io clone, a drawing game. If you've never seen it, I will leave a link in the description. Go check it out. Originally, some of this code has been built during my live streams where I was running a classroom and I was teaching people how to program using ASP.NET Core, Vue.js, and SignalR. This project is still built with ASP.NET Core, SignalR, and Vue.js. We're using the Vite dev server for this. And all the code is in the description. This is going to cover the use case of how do you use SignalR in Angular or React or any any other JavaScript framework. If you cannot pick out the code from here and transport it into your own framework, you can go ahead and learn it. Okay, for this, we're going to start with a demonstration and then we're going to go through the code picking it apart. Two windows, both of them are connected. So I'll create a room. You'll see the room is being updated. I can leave, create, leave, create, and compared to the chat app application where we didn't have a room lobby, here we do have a room lobby. So on this end, let's go ahead and uh, join the same room F, oh, that's actually the wrong one, F9. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw something, okay? We can choose the size of the brush. We can uh, change the color of the brush and uh, we can clear. I'm not gonna use the clear for now, but the point here is if we leave and then rejoin, the painting is still there. If we refresh altogether, what's gonna happen is we automatically get to rejoin the same room with the same painting. Okay, if this client goes ahead and draws, let's go ahead and choose green on here and didn't actually choose green. There we go, All right? So there's green. If we leave, join another room, the canvas is blank. We can draw this squiggle here, join this previous one. And again, you get the picture. You have different game sessions with different drawing boards. And as you're drawing, the draw events get sent to other clients. You then also have a clear event. And if you clear and you refresh, you don't get to see the whole board, right? So the events that are happening are recorded, although you will see why the clear is not really an event. We're just clearing all the events and you will see the implementation. But here is the quick demo. Let's go ahead and pick the code apart. I'll try to cover as much as possible, but focusing on the things that we haven't covered yet. So again, starting with the startup, we will have authentication. I kind of have my own custom authentication extension here. And primarily the authentication here is kind of what we did in the authentication episodes where I'm just stubbing my own authentication. Although what I'm doing here is I am creating the authentication as soon as we connect, not to dwell too deep into the code, but as soon as authentication middleware hits the first time we're going to fail and the result is going to be false. So we'll enter this part of the code, which will create the session with the claim of the user ID and it will basically just authenticate you if you're not authenticated. So you will by default get a cookie. All right, that's how the authentication bit works. This part is just to make this authentication work. Controllers and signal are pretty simple there. Again, room manager, this is a database with some models. So we have a room and then we have the draw event. We then have an iUser ID provider. I can, again, we already know what that is. We have the authentication authorization middleware. We have controllers with the hub and game, and then we have use spa. So use spa, I have a couple of episodes on how to set up ASP.NET Core with Vite or other JavaScript frameworks. Uh, I'll leave a link for those in the description. I'm not gonna be specifically covering this part. Although just to make sure you understand what is happening here is I have the .NET server running on port 5000 and this is proxying requests to my Vue.js application running on 3000. So this is a Vue.js application. Behind the scenes, all the requests are pro proxied to port 3000. And this just makes sure that I don't need to cover any course issues, okay? Both of the applications get served from the same address. Uh, that's about as much as I'm gonna cover on that bit. Let's go ahead, take a look at the game hub and for the map default controller, we're gonna have a room controller here and open the two up. So room controller, super simple. We have a my room endpoint and list endpoint. So here we are listing rooms and here we just want to grab our room. Now, from the point of the game, one thing that I'm going to explain straight away, because it might be a little bit confusing of why we're not doing this through the game hub as we're updating the list of the rooms. Why are we just not pinging the list of the rooms to the front end? So as the user is requesting the list of rooms, we get the context of the user. So we know which user is requesting those rooms and rooms in the game. They could have had admins and regular users. The admin could kick people and people could not kick other people, right? So there were elevated privileges. In order to serve the correct view model and tell the front end, are you an admin or not? That of course did not determine his actions. It just helped render the UI. 
we wanted to say is the user an admin. And this is uh, partly happening because the user's array does not contain all the information about the user. It's a design decision where you can either go ahead and uh, take the session out of the cookie and store that session information into this room, but then you have to keep things in sync. And we chose an approach where we can be more robust, where we know what user is going to make a request. So we're just keeping the ADs, we're keeping the, mean, the minimal information here. And uh, when a particular user is making the request, we know who that user is and how to create that specific room perspective for him where it will say, are you an admin? And if there are any possible things like what's your user ID in here? Are you the same player? So you can, we can highlight you in the chat when you, once you're in the room. So those kind of things. And that, these are the only two actions in the room controller. Uh, on here, we have the game client. We have three things that we're doing. Update rooms, draw and clear canvas. As I had just explained, we're not sending the whole list. We are basically just triggering this event. So then we can do the fetch in order to build correct perspectives. As explained in the chat app video, we put the create in here because we rely on the connection ID. We're not, we are doing some real stuff, uh, real time stuff in here as well. For the join, again, we're going to be doing invoke because we're returning the room view at the end. Uh, and again, we're relying on the connection ID. There isn't specifically like a lot of real time things happening here. However, we still have some of the dependencies on the actual connection session. I'll leave same uh, shindeck we invoke we want to know when we finish this so we know the state on the server is in a correct state so once we execute the following operations on the front end we are not going to override the state or we're not going to create race conditions we then have the draw event where the draw event is just an object right with some coordinates of where we're drawing we're getting the room based on the user so again this uh, session information we're working based on that we are storing the draw events and then again we're using this group except where we're sending things to the room except for the actual person that is doing the drawing. Same thing, the only thing happens here, as I said, the clear event is not stored as an event on the draw events. The clear just clears all the events, okay? This is bad if you want to implement undos. So if I am going to create a room and I'm gonna draw something and I'm gonna pop clear and then I want undo, I wanna be able to pop that event and redraw the board up to that point. So if we want to implement something like that, that's what you're going to do there. And then redraw. So a couple of things that you could do here, you could probably just return the whole array or as I'm doing it, I'm kind of just saying, sending it down the color connection one by one. So I don't know the performance of this, if we just return all the events at the same time or we stream them one by one or we return a stream. I just thought this is cool because if you have a lot of events, it will look as if you're redrawing it. Okay, so uh, not specifically for performance implications, but that is what's happening here. So let's close those two. Just quickly covering HTTP context extensions, uh, just so we can get the user ID, authentication handler we covered, a room controller, room manager we covered, a room view. Again, this model just so we can build a perspective for the specific person looking at the room. User ID provider, we know what that is. Now moving on to the more important part of this episode is how do you use SignalR within a JavaScript framework? A JavaScript framework may have different flavors. It may have a server side rendered flavor or just a load on the front end uh, flavor where you just serve a blank page and then it hooks up to the element and it loads up, right? So you can have server side or client side. The point is the connection once uh, the page loads in the browser has to be established. In Vue.js, at the moment, what I have is the main JS. This is the first thing that gets loaded. Here we mount the application. So this is what's actually going to bind the application to the element. And then we have game connection. Game connection is this file here, which is, well, you can say most of the magic happens. We have the connection. So this part you should be very familiar with. This part, I did not yet show how to do this, but here's the result. So the result of the game connection, this is what we'll return at the end, is essentially the interface for all the operations that you can do with the connections, right? We do not expose the connection all over the place, okay? So if we think signal R is a red dot, if you let it spread across your application, your application becomes red, right? So we want to just have a single red dot and then use a well-defined interface. So if you ever go into TypeScript land, I mean, you're just gonna feel right at home. So yeah, all operations that we could do here, event hooks and actual functions to call on the back end. 
The first thing that we're gonna do is on the connection, once we're trying to create a game connection, we're gonna check the state and we're gonna ask, are we already connected? If we're already connected, just return the result. No problem, just start using it, okay? So it's a promise that is going to resolve straight away. If we are disconnected, start the connection and then push it into the array and then await on starting. By pushing it into the array while it's awaiting and if we are not awaiting on the game connection, that means we will not be blocking the execution thread, something else might come in here and it's gonna check, uh, are we disconnected? If we are disconnected, then it's gonna start it again, but by starting it, you're essentially instantaneously oh, uh, sending the, I should not have pressed that, uh, changing the connection state to connecting, okay? So closing those windows. So yeah, we are starting the connection here, we're pushing it into the array, so the connection state is going to be different once we re-enter it, and at the end here, we want to start awaiting this process here as well. So as soon as the first starting resolves, this one is going to resolve as well. And then because the connection state is going to be connected, I just want to pop this out and empty out the array, okay? And at the end, return the result. So this bit here is just to maintain a singleton connection that could be created, right? So this is always going to produce the result and it's going to ensure that uh, connection.start is called only once. Nevertheless, we initiate the connection before we try to mount the app. And once we mount the app, we go ahead and try to use the connection all over the place. So this is a view three. If you're not familiar with this, I'm going to go over it a little bit, but everything should be pretty apparent here. We have the game connection. So if we want to do things with it, we have the game connection here, and then we bind the events. Uh, the init function works with the canvas. So once the canvas is rendered, we will have the onMounted. This is when the UI component is displayed. We emit an event that we have initialized. Once we have initialized, that is when we buy in the, the draw and clear functions. So we're emitting functions that should be executed up to the game connections. So our canvas is decoupled from the game connection. If you want, I'm not saying it's bad, you could probably put the game connection in here and do the binding here. And then you don't need to hook in into any initialization events. Otherwise, this logic, I am not going to go over uh, the canvas, the actual logic for how we're drawing, how we're constructing the draw events, uh, just understand that the canvas is going to spit out the draw and clear functions right here into the parent component and then the parent component uh, knows about the game connection and then goes ahead and binds this. The rooms bit knows about the game connection as well. It's just I'm making a conscious decision that the game connection should be separate from the canvas and app.view acts as a kind of a mediator facility communication between the game connection, the, uh, the rendering of the rooms and the canvas, and the actual drawing game. In Scribble.io, there is also a chat component. This is probably where I'd whack it in here, and that would probably have a separate interface that would be returned from this game connection class. This would be extracted into its own function as a wrapper function, where this is a factory for the connection, and then we may return two different interfaces. One is the drawing interface, the other one is a... <laughs> which finger do I show? <laughs> the one is the drawing interface, and the second one will be the chat interface, where you're trying to guess the painting that is being drawn. Other than that, in uh, these events, everything should be apparent what we're doing here. I've explained all of this previously. Again, the decision point of do you put things in the controller in, or in the hub, uh, as explained in the chat app, all of the decisions that I've outlined there, they're still relevant here. And uh, the main point is just how do you have your app loading and perhaps asynchronously try to establish a game connection. And uh, this is a way to do that and still be able to have different functions to return different interfaces. The one point that I will uh, say I've made this decision, but it was more of like a personal decision where I decided not to put the game connection into the canvas itself. This can now be taken out into its own component and shared between applications and whether you choose to put it in some real-time game or not, 
that decision can be made later on. If you do not need that kind of functionality or even this idea of a reusable canvas component, if you want to tightly integrate it into working with a game connection, you can go ahead and do that. Also during streaming, the only thing that was kind of asked with the initialization, we're emitting functions which belong to canvas. So what we're essentially doing is if this component is a private object and uh, all of these functions are private, what we're doing is we're exposing an interface implementation of this canvas component through this object with the two functions that we want to have on the interface. Potentially, what we could do is we could pass callbacks from the parent component. So we could bind the connection on draw and on clear as parameters to the canvas component. So it's the, we can pass these functions into canvas. And then in the canvas, once we emit draw, instead of emitting draw, we go ahead and invoke those connection functions that have been passed into the component. So those are the two approaches. Either I give out the two functions or the functions to invoke are given to me. Either way, that helps separate the canvas. And I was asked, passing functions to or from a component, is that an anti-pattern? And I'm going to say no. It's a valid solution. And just because you don't see many people passing functions between components, uh, it's not a problem. It's more of a paradigm question where do we want to just be passing objects around or do we want to be passing functions around? I don't think we'll ever be able to either lean only on object oriented or only on functional programming. There's always going to be a mix. So you got to do whatever makes sense for you at the time. This is all I have on this example here. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comment section or on the Discord server. I'll see you in my other videos and have a good day.